Welcome to the second presentation of Module 2, Introduction to Product Testing from Value Transformation. In this module, we will pick up where the project scope and requirements left off. We will talk about defects and their origins, the difference between testing and quality assurance activities, and the testing process, as well as the concept of independence as it applies to product testing. We all know the old saying, I am only human, I am fallible. This is true no matter what the endeavor, and certainly the more complicated or more dispersed the work, the more likely a defect is to be introduced into the product. Once the defect is into the product, we must find a way to detect the defect and eliminate it, or accept the defect and the consequences upon our organization and the customer and society at large. Some of the reasons defects creep into the product is through poor documentation. This is documentation that is poorly written, describes the features errantly, or is entirely missing. I am sure we have all seen products in which the requirements were largely word of mouth or ad hoc emails, and few actually know how the product is supposed to work. Coordinating a system of assemblies in this manner usually results in parts that do not work well together. When we say poor documentation, we are not saying that all of the documentation be per should be provided from the start of the product. We believe a good practice is to build iterations of the product, and those iterations are described in documentation that is also iterated. We have seen failures due to insufficient time for the development of the product. The team cuts corner to achieve end date, an end date which often has some disconnect from reality of what is required to achieve. We introduce failures into the system when we do not have sufficient expertise in our teams also. Another significant source of defects is when we add undue complexity to the system. This makes designing the system more difficult and increasing the likelihood for the introduction of errors. Complexity of organization has similar impact. Complicated communications paths, hierarchy, and corporate politics can all have the effect of introducing defects or allowing defects to enter the product. There is a difference between testing and quality assurance activities. Each of these target different things. Testing specifically targets the product and product artifacts. Quality assurance activities focus on the process and steps the organization deems necessary to successfully execute and deliver the product. These two areas are typically represented in two different parts of the organization. Sometimes the testing personnel may reside with the development staff. We will discuss that at length later in this presentation. Quality assurance is also often a separate entity or department. There is also another distribution responsibility we should discuss, and that is the developer and the tester. Developers are people that are creating the product. These people write code, design architecture, and check the work as they go through the development process. This checking of the work is called debugging. This debugging is focused upon the portion of the product that the developer delivers. Testers exercise the product with the goal of identifying defects for removal. The focus should be on evoking these defects aggressively and quickly to provide feedback to the developers for correction. We believe testers actively work to break the product. Not, on all, not all unwanted behavior can be documented. Our team may have to aggressively push the product to evoke these defects. Testing independence is the separation of the test personnel from the development personnel. There are reasons why this separation is desirable. First, it is easily possible to question the objectivity of the developer that is critiquing their own work. There are reasons why authors hand their books to another person to review. It is too easy to miss the error that you put into the text, or in this case, the product. Secondly, separation provides opportunity for specialization and focus on testing instead of dispersing testing and development in the same person. The same is true for specialized tools that are required by testers. Testers being separate means the test fixtures and test documentation can be built while the development is ongoing. 
This speeds up the testing progress in addition to improving the talent available for testing. Third, when the testers are separated but, not, but in the same department or reporting to the same manager, we end up in a situation where the objectivity of the decision can be questioned. If the manager of the development department makes the decision on the veracity of the product to launch, if the delivery is date is now, the decision to launch or proceed may trump a serious understanding of the downsides of the launching an inferior or deadly product. The best situation is to have the development and the testing personnel report to two different management structures, separate but equal, and then we put the decision more in the realm of facts rather than that of suspect objectivity. Testing consists of a collection of processes. Each process has an objective and has dependencies or connections to other processes. In testing, planning, design, execute, evaluate, and close are the process areas. This is an illustration of the planning process. It starts with the project and product scope and moves clockwise. The green arrows are the primary path the scope feeds test planning, test planning to design, design makes it possible for us to execute tests, execution produces data which is evaluated, and eventually we are able to close the project and the testing activities. The blue arrows define the improve the work loop. As we execute the design, we learn things that may necessitate revisiting the planning activities. The same is true for the execute phase. We may learn that our assumptions about how the tau to test and what needs to be tested were errant and therefore we revisit the up or update the design. The same for the evaluation. The closure activities feed into planning and perhaps project documentation as, as, part, as well as part of the project lessons learned or retrospective. We provide an example of the IEEE 829 document as an, as an example in this module of the course for test planning. In test planning, we are using the product scope and the risks associated with the product to define and prioritize what gets tested. Exhaustive testing is not possible, and some portions of the product may be more risky should failure happen than others. Consider a vehicle, for example. We would prioritize testing the braking system over testing the radio. This is where we balance our approach to the testing to mitigate the risks we can and make the most of our time available. Our test planning will also help us make the best use of test equipment, either equipment we already have or develop new test equipment. Our test design will follow the priorities and plan we have earlier created. The design is where we seriously prepare for the testing. We will build test cases, test procedures, test data, and any specialized equipment that will be needed. This includes building automation into our testing. We do not wait until the product is available before we start creating this material. Experience suggests this is this to be a significant source of testing failure, specifically those instances when the product is delivered to the test department without advance notice with the test this approach. This test design should map all the way back to the scope of the project. Test execution is where we perform the work of testing the product. In this phase, we will set up the test environment for the specific test, including the test data. We will run the specific tests and note deviations from expectations. This test execution applies to retest and regression testing as well. These are discussed in future modules. The test evaluation is where we review the test results. We will need to make decisions on the findings from the testing. Some of these fault reports may not require immediate action or perhaps action at all. Others may put our company and our customers at risk. We will articulate the results and the interpretations of those results to key stakeholders from those that are impacted or interested in the results of the specific test. All of this will go to the product sponsor as they are the one funding the, the work and we will need to keep them informed of the results as well as what the results may mean. At the end of the testing, when money or time or the work is complete, we will close out the testing. Part of the closeout is to put away the documentation, archiving test fixtures, configurations, and other testware. We will re review the performance of the testing, what went well, and what
what went not so well and use this to improve our testing and test to project management interfaces. Ultimately, there will be a sign off that the testing can be closed and the product testing can be closed now. There are many words that are highlighted throughout the course and these are contained in the testing dictionary. If you are interested in a specific word other than what you see highlighted, check out the testing dictionary. Also, there's another dictionary which contains the laws of testing, an interesting set of things to understand.